Bow now 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 on behalf of everybody, I would like to thank you all for taking the time to watch this video. My name is Corey Banks and I'm a rising senior at Dallas International School. I am planning on going to college and majoring in business. I am now going to write a question to my friend Raul. Thank you, Corey, for your question. The question is, what's my favorite animal? My favorite animal would have to be the lion. Um, hi, my name is Raleigh Nohos. I'm a rising senior at Uplift Hampton. Uh, as for college, I'm thinking of majoring in something in engineering, maybe something in biology. All right, and here's my question for Veronica. Here you go. Thank you, Raul, for the question. It says, what's my favorite color? And I'd have to say pink. Hi, I'm Veronica Fang, and I'm a rising senior at the Hawk Day School. For college, something that I'm interested in considering for my major is something that blends art and computer science. Okay, so now I'm going to write my uh, question for Victoria. Okay, what is my favorite food? My favorite food would have to be Alfredo pasta. Um, my name is Victoria Fashikin. I'm a upcoming senior at Townview Tag, and I hope to study neuroscience and one day go into half clinical, half research in the medical field. Darian, what's your favorite sport? Hey, Victoria. My favorite sport is baseball. Hello, I'm Darian Sanders. I go to Barack Obama Male Leadership Academy. I'm a rising senior. Going into college, my career path will go towards commercial advertisement and sales. My question to Alex is, what is your favorite type of music? Thanks for the question, Darian. He asks, what is your favorite type of music? Well, my music choice really depends varying on my mood, but I would say my favorite is indie pop. Hi everyone, my name is Alex Brazil and I'm currently a rising senior at Bishop Lynch High School. And as far as my major goes, I plan to major in biology on the pre-med track. Now, my question for Tony is, what is your favorite holiday? Thank you, Alex. The question is, what is my favorite holiday? My favorite holiday is Halloween because who doesn't like free candy? Hi, my name is Anthony Gutierrez, also known as Tony. I am a graduating senior from Lasseter Early College High School. I graduated with both my high school diploma and my associate's degree, and I'm currently enrolled in the University of Texas at Arlington. So, map up. My question goes out to Isabella, and that is, what is your zodiac sign? Thank you for your question, Tony. So, Tony asks, Bella, what is your zodiac sign? Okay, great question. Um, my zodiac sign is a Taurus. Well, hello everyone. My name is Isabella Thames. I am a rising senior at Irma Rangel Young Women's Leadership School, and I plan on majoring in biology in college and pursuing a career in science. So that's a little about me. I'm going to write my friend Jennifer a little question. All right, here you go, Jennifer. Thanks for your question, Bella. She writes, what is your favorite show? My favorite show currently is Manifest on Netflix. Hi, my name is Jennifer Welty. I've graduated from Skyline High School this past month, and in college, I plan to go for a degree in biochemistry so I can pursue a career in marine biology or veterinary sciences. Kennedy, here's my question to you. Thanks for your question, Jennifer. She writes, what is your favorite shape? I'd have to say my favorite shape is a triangle. Hi everyone, my name is Kennedy Montgomery and I recently graduated from Irma Rangel Young Women's Leadership School. In the fall, I'll be attending UNT and majoring in public health while on the pre-med track in hopes of one day becoming a pediatrician. Thanks guys for all your introductions. So, what is EEI? EEI stands for Environmental Education Initiative. 
They are an organization that has been providing water conservation education to schools all around Dallas for the past 15 years. They are in conjunction with University of North Texas, UNT, and they are also funded by the city of Dallas. On top of educating kids in the classroom with their elementary in-class lessons, EI also provides five other programs, the Middle School Museum on Wheels and the EI Professional Development, the EI Environmental Summit, the Teen Waterworks Program, the high school internship, which we're doing now, in their elementary in-class lesson program, EI provides the information to younger students. So instead of changing their habits as they get older, they can now start doing the habits from a younger age so that it becomes something that they can tell other people in the future. In their elementary in-class lessons, hands-on TEKS aligned lessons on water conservation are given. Co conservation awareness items are given to the students so that they have the tools to save water at home. Kinder through second grade receives a coloring book that's been designed by the EEI team, and it has information about water conservation and obviously pictures that the kids can color in. Third through fifth graders receive a toothbrush timer that you can use while you're brushing your teeth. And when the timer ends, it means that you need to turn off your water so that you don't waste it because up to five gallons of water can be wasted each time a person brushes their teeth. The timer lasts two minutes. When the timer is on, the water is off. These items help the kids to start their habits early. The Middle School Museum on Wheels is EEI's way of bringing the museum to you, and it consists of interactive exhibits to cover the topics of water conservation and water quality. They have a certified, they have certified teacher-led discussions about water quality. They provide the modules for the program. The EI Professional Development is an opportunity for schools to receive hands-on lesson training for their teachers. The development is a three and a half hour interactive training for teachers, staff, and administration that teach grades K through eighth grade who teach any subject. The participants will receive the materials, lessons, and a voucher of up to $75. The EEI Environmental Summit is a conference-style research summit where students provide a project, propose a project about water conservation in their first year. After proposing a project, a team of college professors and water professionals will work with you to determine if your project will be funded. The students will receive the materials needed to create the project and are required to track their progress in order to present at the following year's summit, which allows them to place based on their research. The EEI Teen Waterworks program is a high school program where the students volunteer to spread knowledge about water conservation. On top of spreading knowledge about water conservation in the Teen Waterworks program, the students also receive volunteer hours for their service. EEI creates many opportunities for teachers and students annually. I myself have been given the opportunity to do this internship where I'm provided with much more information about water conservation and where my water comes from. Their in-class lessons have provided the same information to younger students and teachers. Teachers have reviewed them to be very interesting, amazing, and age appropriate, relevant to students and thought provoking. EEI provides ed education to students of all ages and the amount of schools they reach in the Dallas year area is growing more and more every single year. EI is an amazing program and I'm lucky to have experienced one of their programs. They inspire myself and others to pay more attention to how much water is wasting and to stop polluting their water with plastic bottles. Now that you know a little bit about EEI, I am now gonna pass it on to Veronica who is going to talk to you guys a little bit about our internship and our experience in EEI this year. Thank you, Corey, for the overview on EEI's mission and its various programs. Now, I will be going into the specific details of what we did during the 2021 EEI Summer Internship this year. This internship gives high school students the opportunity to learn about Dallas's water supply and contributes to the promotion of water conservation. While achieving these goals, the EEI Summer Internship remains a unique and interactive experience. In this video presentation, we'll be going over the different activities we did during the internship. To start off, the interns paired up to read, summarize, and present two peer-reviewed articles in the form of a PowerPoint on the topics of water quality indicators, water reuse, 
GIS, attitudes towards water conservation, and how social media impacts water use. Since we did these presentations at the beginning of the internship, this experience served as an introduction to new information about water by allowing us to learn extensively about specific research on this topic. Another activity we did during the internship was taking field trips. We had a total of four in-person field trips to places relating to Dallas's water supply. Specifically, the interns visited and toured White Rock Pump Station, Al Dubois State Park, Bachman Water Treatment Plant, and Central Wastewater Treatment Plant. Many of the interns had never visited places like these, which made these field trips an informative and eye-opening experience. We also had the opportunity to meet and learn from four UNT professors during the internship. The professors were Dr. Roberts, Dr. O'Neill, Dr. Thompson, and Dr. Kennedy. They introduced information on their current research studies and gave us a chance to ask questions. Throughout these meetings, we learned about the process of research and an overview of what it's like to work in the lab. The interns were also tasked with researching water topics. They paired up and each pair researched two. Some examples of topics we researched are the water cycle, alternate water sources, and bottled water. Using our research, we designed several informative projects about the topics. These projects took the form of infographics, TikToks, videos, comics, and memes, and will be posted on the official EEI social media to raise awareness on the water topics. Through this research, the interns furthered their understanding about various aspects of water. During the internship, learning about GIS was a major part of the experience. GIS stands for Geographic Information System, and during the internship, we learned how to navigate the application for GIS mapping. More specifically, the interns created maps that will be used by EEI to present which schools they have visited and educated on the importance of water conservation. Prior to the internship, we had never used GIS before, so learning to use this application has allowed us to build new skills as well as realize the usefulness of GIS. That's it for the overview of the 2021 EEI Summer Internship. The rest of the video goes into more detail about the activities I just mentioned, and now I'll be passing it on to Kennedy to start off with a closer look at the articles. Hi everyone, it's Kennedy, and I'm going to be talking about the articles. So my favorite part of the work we did during this internship was getting to review the research articles. Each group was assigned a category, and from that category, we picked our favorite research article. After that, we were tasked with finding another related research article to review. Finally, we put together a presentation that showcased what we learned from the two studies we reviewed. My partner Jennifer and I discussed the different determinants of water conservation in households. Alex and Bella looked at the influence of social media on water conservation efforts. Rowell and Victoria's presentation covered wastewater reuse, and Anthony and Corey's was about the different water quality indicators. Last but not least, Darian and Veronica's presentation covered GIS. Each group had two weeks to build their presentation. For Jennifer and I, the hardest part was finding a way to create a fun and engaging presentation while also giving a detailed description of the experiments conducted in our research articles. Finally came our presentation day. As we watched each group present, we filled out a rubric and scored each presentation. Doing this allowed me to not only reflect on my peers' presentations, but also think about my own and where I could have improved. I also learned a lot of cool new things about water. For example, Corey and Anthony's presentation, it taught me that urbanization has a huge impact on our water quality. And Bella and Alex's presentation helped me better understand how media influences people's habits and can help with promoting water conservation. I found the presentations to be extremely beneficial because I was able to practice giving a formal research presentation. It was especially helpful to hear my peers' feedback on how I could improve. Now on to Victoria and Tony who will be talking about all of the amazing field trips. Wait, before we get into the next fun part of the video, we'd like to show you a few interview clips that Darian got from the interns. My favorite part about the EI internship was when we paired up to read through two peer-reviewed articles on specific topics. Um, my topic was GIS and I learned so much during this activity and after we read through the articles we summarized it and presented it to the other interns 
And so during this process, I learned a lot as well because um, the interns gave us feedback on how to make our presentation more engaging while still informative, and I just learned a lot in general. My favorite part about this internship was the in-person field trips. We got to tour these amazing, hardworking water treatment plants and meet the people running it. We also got to see how the plant operates. I also enjoyed interacting with my fellow interns considering all the COVID protocols. My favorite part specifically was water testing with our own hands and seeing the results of the water treatment in action. What was your biggest takeaway from the internship? I think that my biggest takeaway is that water conservation is really much larger than I thought of before doing this internship and that you know not many people really understand I think the depth of it because you know whenever we go to turn on the faucet or take a shower or you know even just boiling water for cooking it's just something that has become so common nowadays that people kind of overlook what where has this water come from what has to happen before it enters my home and where does it go afterwards and so I think just the fact that it's become so common in our daily lives has made a lot of us kind of overlook the whole process behind it and now back to the main presentation hi my name is Anthony Gutierrez also known as Tony hello I'm Victoria Fashikin before we get into the cool deets about the field trips, let's talk about what is necessary for a good experience. This is the EEI's intern guides to surviving a field trip. Walking around in the hot Texas sun requires sunscreen to stop the burn, bug sprays, even for the ones that don't bite, a notebook for taking great notes, and choose that you're comfortable with getting dirty. Good vibes when the smells get tough. <laughs> Water, obviously, because it's essential. Snacks to keep you going. And this super cool EEI backpack. But truly, all you need is to come ready to learn. On July 1st, 2021, we interns took our first field trip together to White Rock Pump Station. There we learned about how the city of Dallas's lakes are inspected and with surprising news, Lake Palestine will soon be a contributing lake that will then supply water to the city of Dallas as a tributary. Continuing our knowledge of the environment, we were alarmed of the common invasive species known as the zebra mussels. And what is so invasive about these creatures is that they tend to clog up pipes, which creates complications for water to be directed to its specific locations. As expected, we were taught about what regulations they abide by. For starters, us interns were previously aware that the United States Environmental Protection Agency, commonly known as the EPA, sets water quality regulations in effect with the Clean Water Act. So, we were then informed on the Texas Commission of Environmental Quality, or TCEQ, that they are the management of natural resources and public health on a state level. With this said, the leading environmentalists at White Rock Pump Station emphasized on the protocols that they must follow to monitor their given areas. For example, nitrification is a test that they conduct to test for bacteria in the pipes. In result, they may be alerted by either a red or yellow trigger. With the given warning, these heroic environmentalists work together to provide the solutions to prevent any stagnant water buildup. And now it is time for some fun facts. Fun facts that can be taken away from our trip to White Rock Pump Station is that one, there are two types of water provided and it could be either soft or hard, but it all depends on the level of magnesium and calcium minerals that are in the water in general. So hard water, primarily has high levels of magnesium and calcium, and that is due to it being on the surface for the most part. And for soft water, it has low levels of magnesium and calcium. With this information said, Dallas provides moderately hard water throughout the city. Another interesting fact that can be taken away from the presentation given to us is that if the water from your faucet clears from top to bottom, it is calcium carbonate being released. 
if it is clearing up from bottom to top, that means oxygen is being released. But either way, it is harmless, making fossil water safe to drink. Overall, our first trip in person to White Rock Pump Station was a success and was motivating to venture into a section of the environmental workforce. Secondly, on July 8, 2021, our next field trip as interns was located at Isle de Bois State Park. This trip was to introduce us interns to one of the source lakes for the city of Dallas. As our journey there was peacefully scenic, I for one was ready to venture through forest filled trails. Nonetheless, they exceeded expectations by taking us interns out to one of their main water pipes. There, we were informed that a chemical compound known as hydrosodium chloride is used during the purification process so that it may be safely dispersed throughout the campsite. Using the nearby water source of the Trinity Aquifer, the park reuses the water, which was very fascinating to see how well the state park is well active in water conservation. As for the state park rangers, they conduct a test to examine the dispersed water for residuals of chlorine to make sure what process that should be taken to treat the water. The tools and science behind this career was intriguing to see knowing the stakes of maintaining a stable quality of water for a whole park to contain. After reviewing what the state park rangers have to endure to maintain a stable water quality, us interns mimic similar tests as we used raw water from the Trinity Aquifer, treated water from the Trinity Aquifer, and water from Lake Ray Roberts. For a state park, it was interesting to observe the diligence and concentration needed to keep water quality stable for a public area. Fascinating enough, we as interns grew eager to find out more about how water is handled in different settings, which would bring our next two field trips presented by my fellow intern, Victoria Fasigan. For our third field trip as interns, we ventured through the Bachman Water Treatment Plant where we learned how water is managed to be transferred into our faucets. Our host Chase elaborated every aspect of the treatment plant with welcoming arms. With the City of Dallas having specific tributaries, we were stunned with fascinating news of the Bachman Water Treatment Plant to soon fully transport water from the new Lake Palestine. With this information, this that ties into our last trips, the new tributary seems like a fascinating new lake to examine to see where our new source of water is coming from. For the current water being transferred throughout the plant, it was stated by our host that approximately 60% of water that gets treated at the plant is from Louisville and the other 40% is from Grapevine, making the work in the plant crucial for they have to provide a control on water quality to make sure there is not any complications to access our clean drinking water. In correlation to the maintenance of water pH levels, the disinfectant of water itself was elaborated by introducing a substance known as ozone, which assisted in the cleaning of the water from harmful bacteria. This helps detox the water and for smell and taste. This hands-on experience with touching the ice is surely what sets virtual field trips apart from in-person. We went inside the room where ozone is created. In here, we started to discuss the different pathways a person could take to get a job at a water treatment plant. We found out that the pathways are so varied because of the different aspects of cleaning water. They have engineers, chemists, mechanics, operators, and many more. For each pipe and turbine, each metal piece serves a purpose and affecting the water differently. And seeing this area of work was interesting to see how far water has to go through before it is allowed to run through the sink. The next step was the operation room where we had this amazing view of the different stages of the water cleaning process. Each stage had an, a different chemical process or physical process that went in the order of coagulation, flocculation and sedimentation. When the water is in this facility, there is a significant amount of mechanical movement to keep the water from stagnating, thus enforcing the crucial need for mechanical aspects of this facility. Here we are cleaning the filters and sending the sludge back to the lagoon. 
It was a truly amazing experience to see the mechanical work behind the movement of water and see how it gets treated. We were able to even see it, an original instrument in the filter room when the plant first started. After starting off the internship with research on water reuse, the interns and I discussed how cool it was to see the process in our own city. Nothing beats the actual experience of going to an actual plant and having a five-star tour. The last of our field trip series was at the Central Wastewater Treatment Plant. With just 2 to 3% of our earth consisting of fresh water and no reliable way to make more, cleaning the water we already have is so, so important. We were given a history of the two wastewater plants in Dallas. We learned the Central Wastewater Plant has 4,400 miles of pipe connected to the facility and the multiple partner cities. The Central Wastewater Plant even had a turtle rehabilitation station to save the turtles that can't be sent back to wildlife. I have never smelled something so bad in my life, but it honestly left me reassured that no contaminants were being left in our water. Our tour guide, Ron, was a man filled with such energy and passion for what he does. He was able to answer every question and was just so knowledgeable in everything wastewater. Although many people don't like to think of this step in our water process, it is truly so important. Even with all the waste we saw, the site also had very beautiful views. It felt so sad knowing it was our last time being together all in person, but having the field trip definitely allowed us to bond. Now that we have finished a recap of our field trips, Next topic of our internship being covered is our reactions. Again, I'm Raul and this is Jennifer. And in this segment, we'll be talking about our reactions. You may be wondering what these so-called reactions are. Well, we're here to tell you. Reactions are the, fir are the interns' first impressions about what we learned uh, during the presentations of our professors and also during the field trips. We had the luxury of speaking with four professors, including some of the grad students, and going on four different field trips to different water treatment plants. The first professor we heard about was from Dr. Roberts, who is the Associate Vice President of Research and Innovation at UNC. <laughs> As Raul mentioned, Dr. Roberts was our first professor that we got to speak to. He focused on the effects of oil spills in the ocean, specifically on fish and other marine life, such as dolphins. He focused on the eyesight of fish because so that he could compare it to humans' eyes because they are very similar in structure. To test their, the fish eyesight, he put them in a tube container that had a black and white pattern. The fish traced, they traced the black pattern and the circular fan spins faster and faster and once the fish loses sight of it and can't see it anymore, that's how they measured the eyesight. Some takeaways that I had was that it's more than just coming in contact with the oil, but the byproducts too, of course, the gases. The one event can lead to a chain reaction, an oil spill can lead to um, the killing or the harming of fish and other marine aquatic life. They can affect their lungs and eyesight. And there are always people um, monitoring the ocean's chemical composition. That really um, stood out to me that there's always someone monitoring the oil, the composition, the, all the toxins, the, all the chemicals and bad things. After Dr. Roberts, we spoke to Dr. Thompson, the Assistant Vice Principal for Digital Strategy, Innovation, and Te Executive Director for CLEAR, and also the Professor and Co-Director of Teach North Texas. Ms. Synopsis, she went over what science is, why scientists ask why, and always do your own research. 
The takeaways that I had were that you always need to do your own research, no matter what. Don't don't trust other people. They may be correct, but you always want to check that. Never stop asking why. That's what makes you a scientist. Scientists always ask why. They always want to know more. They always want to go more in depth. And she also mentioned that emotional connections are key to memorable experiences. For example, if you wanted to memorize all the bones of the body or all the chemicals in the ocean, you need to make it memorable or emotional in order to really um, absorb it into your brain. After Dr. Thompson, we got to speak with Dr. O'Neill, who is the director for the Center of Computation, Computational Epidemiology and Response Analysis and Research. He is also the associate professor at the Department of Biological Sciences. So in Dr. O'Neill's presentation, uh, we got to uh, learn about data-driven methods for emergency response planning. And so in this presentation, he talked about using drones to collect GIS material, which is a geographic information system material. So he would essentially use these unmanned aerial systems for data collection. And in turn, he would create digital surface models with the data he collected. Uh, using this data, he would, he would use uh, replant RSS routing algorithms, which essentially created an algorithm that uh, found out the best routes to uh, escape in the case of an emergency. Um, one tough thing that he explained to us was the na was nav navigating and separating, uh, you know, jurisdictional boundaries. And a couple of takeaways that I got from this presentation were that jurisdictional boundaries were tough to map out. As I just said, in a city as big as Houston, you would imagine that distributing materials is not the easiest thing. Um, and over time, GIS has improved uh, as technology has as well. One thing he, he said in the presentation was that GIS is very old, uh, dating back to the 1800s. And as time has uh, gone on, GIS has improved with the case of technology, computers, um, you know, unmanned uh, aerial spacecraft and, and aircraft. And this has improved GIS uh, as a whole. Finally, uh, we learned that GIS configuration is extremely extensive, but we go from using unmanned aerial uh, aircraft to map these spaces out and we can use a variety of map configurations to uh, grab a, a lot of data from these uh, GIS maps. All right. Last but not least, we got to speak with Dr. Kennedy, who is the Regents Professor and Director of the Elm Fork Educational Center and the Natural Heritage Museum, which specializes in ecology of benthic invertebrates and exotoxicology. In Dr. Kennedy and his graduate students' presentation, we learned a, a bit about microinvertebrates and their, present, their presence in lakes and ponds. We also learned about all the types of aquatic insects that are in the world, specifically here in North Texas. And we also got to know a little bit about the importance of plants and insects in these ecosystems. Okay. So a couple of takeaways from these presentations was that uh, one thing that we were blown away by is that dragon, dragonflies can eat small fish, which was uh, mind blowing to us at the time of the presentation. We didn't know that these small dragonflies that grew up in, you know, in these lakes as larvae could grow up and eat small fish. Um, another thing was that aquatic insects can, can be used to understand you know, human activity, which is this anthropogenic activity. We can learn how human activity has affected these insects and vice versa. And we also learned this mind blowing stat about there being around, if not more than six, 76,000 species of aquatic insects in the world, which is uh, you know, an interesting fact considering Dr. Kennedy specializes in this area of research. Overall, reacting to these presentations was very helpful since we got to reminisce about what we learned during the presentations. And can't you believe dragonflies eat fish? That's wild. <laughs> the reactions were also very informative. And we also got to use this info that we learned about environmental science and water conservation as a whole throughout the whole internship. Well, now on to the next section. 
And now for our second round of interviews. My favorite thing about the internship is being able to meet the different type of career paths out there when it comes to the water world. We're able to learn that there's engineers, there's mechanics, there's technicians for the computer. There's a lot of career paths out there just to work in this system of water. And that's whether treating water, cleaning water, processing it. There's so many different levels and careers out there that there's really just so much to do. There's so much to gain from. Okay, what is one major takeaway that you got from this internship? Uh, one major takeaway for me personally was learning about GIS. Since next year I'm going to be a public health major, learning that GIS is something that's actually um, utilized in public health was interesting and important to me because it's something I would want to continue to learn more about as I learn more about my field. And now, back to the main presentation. What's up guys, Darren here. And so I'm going to introduce to you what are water topics. Now, this year when we first met up as a group in EEI, um, we were introduced what was called the course water topics. And these are essentially categories that we were given to us by our mentors and to basically help guide us with what type of content we need to create. Um, why do we do water topics is essentially just to create content to reach more people, um, to make it fun and engaging, but also informative as well. Three social media platforms we use, such as Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, they also publish it on the EI website as well. And things that we make, it goes from comics to memes to infographics, vlogs, even TikTok. And so primarily the focus, again, is to create content and to meet all sorts of people, no matter their age, who they are, their background. And some of the water topics that we present to others at first seem weird, such as water bottle usage or an alternate water source. But these topics are commonly asked questions that students and teachers always wonder about. Hi again, the water topics that we focused on were water standards and saving water. One of the things we made was a video presentation among other articles that educate the public on the standards needed for water to be good for, the, for consumption and also the activities needed to be done in order to save water. Oh look, an open faucet. Let me close it. I just saved gallons of water. In the first video demonstration, it shows how to close running faucets to help save water. And as stated in the video, by closing the running faucet, Anthony was able to save gallons of water being wasted. Oh no, I dropped my ice cube. Instead of throwing the ice cube away in the sink, I decided to give the ice cube to my plant. In the second video, Anthony places a fallen ice cube in a plant instead of putting it in the sink. This highlights the lesson of saving water by reusing the water from the ice cube so that the water can be given to the plant instead. We were not the only interns making helpful videos. The crew of interns contributed informative videos that summarize activities we endeavored throughout the internship. Overall, these video representations can help reach people by teaching them things they may not know. We hope these videos prove educational to help offer some ways to save water and spread awareness on how water is handled in your home. Hi, I'm Victoria Fashikin. And I'm Veronica Fay. And we are going to talk about our water topics. Our research was regarding how bottled water would have ne negative impacts on our environment. So we did a lot of research on that and we found numerous facts. Uh, that's why we decided to make an infographic. And so I'll be sharing the screen here to show that. So we weren't the only interns that had the idea of infographics. So Raul and Anthony also made um, another information. It kind of just serves as a quick way to inform the public and uh, it could be used on Instagram, inside office spaces. And um, the other group we that also made an infographic was uh, Jennifer and Kennedy. They made this really, really pretty um, one sheet source of information that teaches a lot. Another type of social media that we created was memes. 
Our group of interns thought creating memes was important because they're fun and appealing to younger people, but they can also be used to share information. Here's some memes created by Alex to promote water con conservation and educate people about water pollution. Hello again everyone, Alex and Corey here. For our water topics, we want to briefly tell you guys about the topics we worked on in another common form of making media for our topics. That's right, Alex. So our group covered the topics of water, the water cycle and Dallas water and where it comes from. And just to go a quick summary of those, our water cycle media covered how the water cycle plays a role in transmitting pollutants throughout the environment. And our city of Dallas water media covered where city of Dallas water comes from and if it's safe to drink. A common form of media that we used for one of our topics was comic strips. Here you can see one that I made about, you can see one that I made about the prevention of pollutants in our water sources by picking up litter. So this is another example of a comic that our group made. Um, here, Corey made a comic, of just kind of a, a brief example of the water cycle, but through the perspective of a water droplet. And this comic right here is a comic made by our internship partners, um, Darian and Bella, and they made a comic about watersheds, and it's being explained by two little hedgehogs in a simple way. Hi everyone, Bella and Darian here. Wait, Darian? What are you doing? Oh. My bad, Bella. I was on TikTok. You know how sometimes it can get kind of addicting. I know, right? Did you know that there are over 1.1 billion active users on TikTok? That's crazy, Bella. I guess that means that creating a TikTok videos is a great way to reach out to people. You're absolutely right, Darian. The great thing about creating a TikTok is the opportunity of making a fun but short informational video. Because of TikTok's popularity, more people are drawn in to click and watch a short video. After all, it is just 60 seconds. Our water topics are watershed and human impacts on the environment. And we chose to express our knowledge through TikTok. And to prevent water pollution, avoid leaving plastic and chemical waste near watersheds. Our TikTok is fun and engaging and never loses our audience attention, which was our main goal. We wanted to quickly introduce and plant the seed of our topic. Watersheds to inspire the audience to later do more research or just know what a watershed is. There are so many different routes and so much room for creativity when making a TikTok. You can dance. Lip sync. And remember, with a little rust ease and an insane amount of luck, you too can look like me. ka -chow. Or act. Enjoy. and so much more. TikTok really is a hub for versatility. And yeah, those are the reasons we create a TikTok on our topic, watersheds. Right, Bella? Bella? Right, right. Make sure to check out the TikToks that our interns have created on all of EEI's social media platforms. Coming up, we have our third round of interviews. Let's hear them. So what is your biggest takeaway from the internship? My biggest takeaway from the internship is that I guess the trust that I had, I, I guess the trust that I put into trusting the water, the water systems that Dal that Dallas is give that Dallas presents to us, mainly because growing up it's always been it's always been questionable to drink out of the faucet or to trust the faucet water. But after after being an intern at for EEI, I can fully do I can fully trust the the faucet waters now, and I could put and I can basically and i could basically trust the waterways that that the city has so what is your favorite thing or what do you like about doing the reactions in the internship yeah 
Um, I think the reactions into all the trips and all the presentations, uh, you know, we take part in, you know, give us an insight into uh, what the internship is about, you know, and what Dallas EEI is about, you know, learning about water conservation, water preservation, and what can we do in the future to uh, save water. So what is your favorite part about the internship? Uh, my favorite part has definitely been talking to the professionals and kind of seeing how they still have so many, so much passion after so many years and they are still filled with so much discovery. It kind of uh, inspired all of the interns and it kind of let us know that we should choose a career where we feel like we're making change in the world and uh, we are just able to stay happy even if we stay in the same career for about 50 years. Okay. And now, back to the main presentation. Thank you, Darian, for that fun interview. Now, I want to take you all back to the main presentation to talk about one of the most fundamental parts we use to analyze data, the Geographic Information System, which we all commonly know as GIS. Prior to joining the EEI intern team, none of us had ever experienced working with GIS. And the person with most knowledge over it before was me. And the only thing I knew about GIS was that it existed and it had to do with maps. So that should give you a pretty good idea about where we were standing as a team as far as our GIS knowledge goes. Now, at first glance, GIS seemed like an overly complex tool to plot highly dense maps and information across the globe. But after watching various tutorial videos from our wonderful Miss Crystal, we all grew to be able to navigate GIS with ease distinguish good maps from bad maps, identify the elements of a map, and use shapefiles to create maps with our specific data relating to EEI and other things. With the fundamentals down pat and our minds ready to create and explore our capabilities with GIS, we began our main GIS project. Displaying on the screen right now, we have our first big map, and that is the Major Texas Watersheds map. Although the legend makes it look a bit intimidating, the map is very straightforward and simple showing only the highlighted watersheds and their names. Oh, and plus the city of Dallas, which is highlighted in the middle. And from this distance, we all agreed that it looked like a little one-eyed monster. Following our watershed map, we began working on our EEI impact maps. To make these, the EEI interns got into small groups and created maps showing the locations of impacted and non-impacted elementary schools in the Dallas area, including charter, private, and public schools. Here you can see the map that we created with this data and what areas EEI has been to and hasn't been to. These maps that we made will be used to show Dallas City Hall some of our progress and for EEI's use for documentation and planning. These maps show the elementary schools in Dallas that EEI has visited and spoken to, marked by the orange symbols labeled as impacted, and the elementary schools that EEI has yet to reach, marked by the blue symbols labeled non-impacted. As you can see, we made a map showing all elementary schools, one showing just private, one just public, one just charter, and then one final detailed map showing each of these three schools with a different symbol that you can see now. And now I want to quickly show you guys around GIS by demonstrating how to create a simple map. Hi everyone, Zoom Alex here. So right now I'm going to be demonstrating to you all how to make a simple map using ArcGIS Online, which is a software that we use to make our maps. So as you can see right off the bat, here we have a map of the entire world. And with this map of the entire world, you can you know, add any shape files for any locations, any sort of data that you can really think of um, that is already on GIS or that you have added as a shape file to GIS. So with that being said, I'm now going to search the ArcGIS Online database for a map of the Dallas district so that we can zoom in on it and find it and highlight it easily. So if we go here to add and then click search for layers and we go to the ArcGIS online database and search for Dallas districts like I have right here, then we already get 94 different layers popping up. So this is just an example of how vast the Dallas, the ArcGIS online database really is. And so I like this one the most, this one right here, and so we're going to click the little plus sign here at the bottom to add it onto our map. And it automatically zooms us in and takes us to the shapefile. Now, if we go to content, we'll be able to see this file. And then we've got lots of different options and lots of different customization tools that we can use. The first thing we want to do is 
this map is really solid of color right now. And so it's because of that, we can't see behind it. So we want to change the transparency a little bit. So we're gonna click these three different shapes to change the style and then go to options. And right here on overall transparency, we wanna turn this down. There, as you can see, as I do that, it starts to get more and more visible until it's 100% transparent and I can't even see it. So actually what we want to do is go to symbols and here we've got the fill color. And if we change the fill color to about, about like right here and then click OK, you'll see that the fill is now become more transparent, but the border lines are still full, which is what we want. We want to have those strong border lines so that you can easily differentiate the districts but maintain a transparent inside. So we'll up the transparency just a little bit more and there we have what our map is going to look like. And then with our outline, we want to change that color to black and then change the line width a little bit. Let's make it a little bit bigger and change it to 1.2. So now you can see we have very defined border lines and then a transparent fill color, which is exactly what we want. Now you might be wondering, well, what are all these districts anyways? So what we want to do next is we want to add labels to these. So there we have, now we have our numbers. We're gonna make those a little bit bigger and change the font, make them a little bit fancier by adding a halo and some italics. Click okay to save your changes. Now we have the Dallas district. And if we go to legend here, you see the blue is going to be the council boundaries. So yeah, that just about does it for the creation of a simple map on ArcGIS Online. Um, for the rest of this video, I did end up filling out some more data and actually plotting the points, but I just thought that I would go ahead and fast forward to that part so that y'all can see the final product while already having that understanding from the creation of the Dallas districts. And here is the final product, a full GIS map displaying all impacted and non-impacted elementary schools. Well, why did the intern team for a water conservation organization study an online mapping software anyway? That seems like it's off topic. Well, through our experiences and presentations with GIS and the maps I just showed you all, we've learned how diverse GIS is in the workforce and just how many jobs can use this incredible mapping software. Because of this, we are super glad to have learned about GIS and are proud that we can say we know how to use it before we go into our first jobs. So that was just a very brief demonstration of the capabilities of GIS. But as you can see, even with the basic amount of knowledge that we've learned, we're still able to make such a big impact with these maps and use them to plan for the future. And with that, I'd love to pass it to you, Bella. And now for our fourth and final round of interviews. Let's see them, Darian. What did you learn from the internship? I've learned so much about water conservation and the treatment of our water here in Dallas. Um, every time I learn something new, I spread it to my family, and I think that's a bigger impact here. What is your biggest takeaway from the internship? My biggest takeaway is um, the fact that we use a bunch, like a lot more water than we think we do. And it's we don't see how, how much of a toll it takes on our environment. And I think that going forward, I'm gonna change a lot of my habits so that I can put my two cents in. Thank you so much, Darian, for getting all of those interviews done so that we can get a better view on the perspective of the interns and what they think about the internship. And now, back to the main presentation. Great presentation, Alex. Now that you've seen all that the interns have accomplished this summer, let's talk about the future of EEI. Switching over to you, Darian. While we didn't get a specific research question this year, we love to be able to give some inspiration for next year's group of interns. Our group has come up with some research questions that we would like to be further investigated by next year's set of interns. So Bella, what questions does our group have in mind? I'm so glad you asked, Darian. First, let me give you some background and context of our questions. This past year has called for many changes in our lifestyle, and this includes the way EEI teaches water conservation to DISD schools. With the new COVID precautions, EEI has switched over to virtual lessons. Because of this, EEI has brainstormed and developed a new way to provide elementary lessons virtually. virtually. The EEI team built a hands-on kit for each student and delivered them to the schools prior to the lesson. Later on, the classes would join to Zoom to learn the lesson together. This school year, EEI has saturated four schools virtually. What does saturate mean, Bella? 
Of course, Darian, a fully saturated school is when every class, kindergarten through fifth grade, has been given the EEI water lessons. Wow! So far, EEI has fully saturated the following schools. Barbara Jordan Elementary, JQ Adams, Jane Bryant, and Truett. So Bella, what is our research question? One potential question for next year's interns might be, did the hands-on virtual lessons make an impact on the amount of water used in the school zones where EEI taught all classes? Great idea, Bella. Since EEI saw a change in water consumption in the schools they have saturated, the EEI team and the interns have been interested in seeing if they could see a change in high water use areas. This map made by the 2019 EEI interns show higher water usage areas in Dallas and some of the schools that EEI has not yet visited. One potential research goal for next year, depending on the state of district and COVID-19 impacts, will be for EEI to saturate a school in a high water usage area and see if there's a difference in water consumption afterwards. EEI continues to study their program and its effectiveness. Both of these research questions would allow them to test new aspects of the program, the virtual lessons and high water use areas. Our group knows there are multiple variables, but we would like to see how next year's interns approach these research questions. We think that it will be really interesting to see the results. But that's not all us interns want to see for the future of EI. Through our field trips this year, we noticed one huge thing. What was it, Darian? At both our field trips to Isle Du Bois and White Rock Pump Station, our team tested the water at both places, right? Right. We tested the water using multiple different water kits, testing the nitrate, pH, and so on. Most of them were paper strips or hand titration methods. Exactly, Bella. We noticed that these water strip kits were not as consistent as the water testing probes we saw the experts use. After double checking our data, we noticed some inconsistencies, most likely due to these not very descriptive paper strips. Our interns are invested into EEI investing in professional grade water testing probes, just like these. Us interns this year have had so much fun with this program and all the activities that we did as a team. We are super excited for next year's interns and watching EEI grow. Thank you everyone for watching and big thank you to EEI for giving us this amazing opportunity where we can grow as people. So thank you again for watching. Bye. 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 Bye.